Now, the Tory MP under investigation for allegedly watching pornography on his phone in the Commons says it, he opened it accidentally. Yes, Neil Parrish has rejected calls to stand down as an MP after he had the Tory whip suspended yesterday. The Select Committee chair said he would be continuing his duties as an MP whilst cooperating with investigators. Well, Parrish himself was on GB News just three days ago and this is what he told us about the incident back then. I mean, I think the whips office will do a thorough investigation and we will wait and see that result. And I think, you know, from that, then the decision will have to be made what action to be taken. Well, let's talk to Peter Barnes, who's a political consultant and strategist who joins us now. It's good to see you this morning. Look, there is an investigation underway, which begs the question that, you know, that, that things need to be answered here. This this claim that it was just opened accidentally. Mm. Oh, you're smirking. I do you not believe it? I don't know. It's it's it is a little bit funny. I have to admit this is story. It's, it's completely disgraceful this behaviour. But like I said, we've got to wait for the investigation because these uh, systems have been put in place. There's a new committee that it, this has gone towards after the bullying scandal and all the rest of it. I think we've got to have faith in the system. Otherwise, we are then have to question. Well, what's the point in having the system in the first place? Um, it is. I have to admit. Uh, sorry, I wasn't expecting this week. I don't think anybody was really mm. expecting this one um, at all. But um, it comes in light, obviously, with other MPs being accused of um, misconduct as well. And, you know, it's right across the House. So the MPs' behaviour is really becoming a quite hot, hot topic issue. And sorry. it hasn't before. I don't remember anything like this since John Major's time as Prime mm. Minister. Um, but it... it, it feels, it sounds sleazy. It does, things yeah. Things are going on. Yeah, it does. Um, I, I actually think a lot of um, like ordinary people watching at home will just think, not another story like this. It's about time that I think the Parliament really got to grips with this problem. You know, like I said, it's, it's just one after another after another now. And I, it's becoming a little bit, uh, like I said, just really just a sleazy story that just doesn't sound good and makes everybody in politics just sound awful when in reality there's a lot of good people mm. who work in Parliament who are being tarred with these bad apples. And it's about time we, I think we started kicking the them out, if I'm being brutally honest. But there's been sleaze in Parliament for ever and a day. Mm. Ever and a day. And certainly when you talk to... I, I know people who've worked there for a very long time, and some of the stories from back in the sort of 60s, 70s mm. and 80s are absolutely <laughs> horrifying when you think about it. Is it just that we, we suddenly... Things start coming to light because people get tired with the government? I think so, yeah. Um, you know, as governments get tired, you know, there's more of these stories start to... Um, start to come out. But I also think, because we've got greater access to what's going on in Parliament now, thanks to social media and, you know, there's, there's more media choice, I think these stories are a lot more common than they probably were back, even back in the 60s and back um, even like under the major years, you know. God knows what um, was even not made public at that time, mm. considering, you know, some of the stories that came out then. Well, considering our Prime Minister was having an affair with one of his yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah, We didn't know about it till afterwards. That's pretty bad in itself. Yeah, for sure. But this, can I just ask, I mean, for people who are on their tablets or um, iPhones or whatever, a lot... Uh, constantly uh, having a look at your emails, opening emails maybe that, uh, or, or WhatsApps or whatever uh, that you don't always know. Is it feasible that that he, as he said in his excuse, that it happened accidentally? I think it is. Yeah, I think it's one hundred percent feasible. But the question really is. Really, should MPs be on the phones in the House of yeah. Commons at all? I know this is well, well, they are, but they, they yeah, are. they definitely are. And there's, there's an argument that um, you know they need to access to their staff and they need to update to news straight away. But I, I, whenever I watch Parliament or whether I'm in Parliament and watching the debates, I think it generally looks terrible. We just see MPs sat there on the phones, and you know there was a story. I think it was just a couple of years ago where an MP was playing Candy Crush. You know, like I, I, I think it's. I just think visually, I think it looks awful, and I think if you're in the in the chamber in the debate, you should be paying attention to the debate. You know, that's why you're there. That's why people elected you to be in the House of Commons. It's not really just to be sat on your phone. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's why it's not just insulting to women, is mm. it? The fact that he was uh, watching something accidentally or otherwise on his phone. Mm. It's it's insulting to everybody because it may, it's not very professional. Yeah, 100% agree. Like, um, if I'm in any kind of meeting and I've just sat there on my phone, you know, I, I will get a stern look from mm. one of my directors, like, what are you doing? And I, I think we need to bring that back into the House of Commons and back into politics in general. You know, a, a sense of professionalism, you know, I do... MPs have to start to hold themselves to a higher standard. I know we always use that phrase, but mm. it's, it's about time we, they started to live up to the standards that they claim to represent. Um, look, can we also have a look at... Because, I mean, obviously, with, with Neil Parrish, the focus 
is on the Tory side. Yeah. On the Labour side, what do we make of Beergate? Because it seems to be sort of gaining some momentum in some respects, and yet the police have seemed pretty adamant they're not going to bring any, any PCNs on this. Yeah, Beergate's quite an interesting one. Um, it really all came about with Nick Hol uh, Richard Holden, who's the, the MP from up in Durham, who br uh, wrote to the police saying, in light of the Rishi Sunak's fine, it's not really what Boris has done, it's in light of Rishi Sunak's fine, that is, the, what's the double, is there a double standard there, and does it need to be investigated? There's then come out with the, the longer video that was published, I think it was on the Mail, I think they published it, and then, you know, we've got a lot of other stories, a lot of other claims that have been brought out. The most interesting bit of all of it is, why did the Labour Party not really admit that Angela, Angela Rayner was at this event? For a long time, they denied that her presence was there. And now Keir Starmer's come out today and said it makes absolutely no difference. If it makes no difference, why were they for so long claiming that she wasn't there? Did everyone just magically forget that she wasn't in the room? I imagine if Angela Rayner's in the room, most people would notice. So did everyone because forget? Because it, oh. it is said, isn't it, that Rishi Sunak is really sore about the fact that he turned up early for a cabinet meeting mm. and found himself ambushed yeah. by what appeared to be um, a birthday cabinet. Or yeah, something exactly. For Boris, yeah. So I can, I, you can understand. It's it's a very similar situation. Yeah. Isn't the, it? The, the, and then what's what's really going to happen is the police in Durham have really got to come forward and say what's the material difference between Keir's incident and what and Rishi's incident. And um, we've yet to have that. And like like we said, they they're looking into. I think they phrased it as new communications that they've received. I think was the phrase they'd used right. uh, to see whether they're actually going to open the. Uh, the beer gate investigation, but we're, we're just going to have to sit and wait on that one from, from the police's end. It's frustrating, though, from everyone's perspective, everyone watching and listening this morning, isn't it? Because, I mean, I know a lot of people are just fed up with all these mm. allegations. They don't want to hear any more. But if, if there has been a level of hypocrisy with what's been, you know, said from the Labour front bench during mm. all of this... Well, I mean, that does have to be looked at, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. The, the way that the Labour Party have really gone after this is, is, is a kind of moral issue. They've gone after it as a kind of... Uh, Keir Starmer's very sat very firmly on his high horse for, for, and lecturing everybody. Mm. If it turns out that he's just as guilty as everybody else, you know, it could be a resignation matter, really, because you can't start, you know, casting stones against everybody else if you're just as guilty. And I think it's often the hypocrisy that... The, brings people down in politics this more than the actual allegation. This is appalling state of affairs, isn't yeah. it? I mean, I think anyone sitting at home thinking, what, are, what is our politicians, what, what has it come to? Yeah. Mm. That, that we are, I mean, I can understand them losing faith totally. And, and, and you hear phrases like, oh, they're all pigs with their nose in the mm. same trough. And well, whilst we know that's unfair because we know mm. there are some very good MPs who do brilliant work, it's beginning to look that way. Oh, yeah, definitely. What will be very interesting to see um, will be the turnout of the local elections in a couple of days. It's about you know, people turning out to vote either against the government, to kind of vote against a political party, or are they just going to stay at home? My gut instinct is a lot of people are just going to stay at home because they're saying, like, can't be bothered with any of them. Mm. As you said, this is becoming a little bit of a tit-for-tat, back-and-forth thing, or you try to catch each other out, a kind of gotcha situation. And I think people are just... And kind of it's bored interesting, I mean, the Daily Express did a poll asking people mm. what they really care about, and it's not... I mean, they're fed up, yeah. apparently, according to this poll. They're fed up with beer gate and every, anything else gate. They, they want the cost of living addressed. Yes, 100%. Cost of living should be the number one priority that everybody should be talking about, but, again, we're stuck with tick-for-tack politics, mm. and whilst everybody likes a bit of punch and duty, eventually, you know, this is real... This is lives, it's people's mortgages and jobs, and, and you know, the government's got to get a grip on this, and Parliament and, and all politicians are across the political spectrum, have to grow up a little bit and get on with the job that they were put there to do. OK. Peter Barnes, good to talk to you this morning. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, well, let us know what you think about that one. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is the cost of living that we all wish that the government would address. But at the same time, if they're being done, as it were, for uh, all those parties in Number 10, uh, you can see how gr aggrieved they feel that it's the same isn't happening with uh, Beergate. Mm. So, yes. and, and on that porn issue, because it was interesting, although we, did, we didn't get to read them out actually yesterday because we ran out of time, but there were quite a few people yesterday messaging in saying, well, could it just be opened accidentally? We've all been sent dodgy things mm. on WhatsApp, haven't we? And you open it up and just go, oh, dear, yeah. you know, and <laughs> delete it as quickly as possible. And I think probably people send those sort of things to MPs deliberately. So oh, you yeah. can understand it, but you'd switch it off pretty quickly, wouldn't you? Mm. You'd get rid of it pretty quickly. So I don't know. So it, it does need investigating. It's, isn't it interesting how something that seemed cut and dried yesterday mm. suddenly and suddenly you blurry. think, oh, oh mm. I don't know. I do find it extraordinary that he appeared on GB News at the same time that he when knew. When he knew he must have been asked, he was going to be asked about yeah. it. Yeah.
That is, uh, on the other hand, if he'd been booked for his interview and then withdrew when everybody was wondering who the MP was, he might have felt that that would be the wrong thing to do too. Yeah, but it, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. When you appear on television, you're asked about that very thing. That's the time he should have actually said, it's me. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. It's the only really honest thing to do. It is. But it, I mean, can you imagine it being difficult? You, would, difficult you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do it, but what else, you know? He put himself on television. Had to know it was going to come out eventually. Yeah. Anyway, let us know what you think. I'd love to get your thoughts this morning GB on that. GBnews at gbnews.uk.